today we are going to be talking about for loops. But before we get started, I just want to do a quick interruption by our wonderful sponsor, me. <laughs> this video was sponsored by my C programming crash course, which you guys can check out in the description below. It'll give you everything you need to know in a uh, reasonable time frame. So it's cool. Okay, so back to the, the point of this video, which is for loops. Okay, so in the previous video, we talked about loops in general, and we described the three pieces of these loops, which is the initialization, the comparison, and the update. Now, the for loop allows us to very easily see this in code. That's why I recommend starting with the for loop versus the while loop or the do while loop, which we'll talk about in upcoming videos. So let's just write out a simple for loop that's going to execute some code 10 times, 10 times. Okay, so you start with the keyword for, then you just follow that pattern. The first thing is the initialization. So you can actually uh, create a variable in here. Typically it's known as I, um, and partially you can think of it as an iterator um, because every single time we go through this loop, it's called an iteration. So each iteration, we can uh, keep track of what iteration we're on using this variable i. And, and we'll see what that means in just a second. But for now, just know it's typically called i if it's something very simple, but you can use anything in these for loops. And my camera, you better not go out of, get in focus right now. Oh, see, I don't use manual focus because then what happens is my video is out of focus the entire time because <laughs> I, I literally am terrible at camera work and I can never get it right. So if you guys got some tips, leave them in the comments. Anyways, first thing, initialization, int i equals zero, and we end it with a semicolon. Then we do the comparison. While i is less than or equal to 10, and then we do the update, which is usually something like i plus plus. So you can visually see the three points. The first thing, the initialization, comparison, update. Then you have curly braces, and this defines what's going to happen 10 times. And um, this here is what determines how many times we want to loop. So as long as this is true, it's going to execute. So we can put our code in here, and um, we can kind of just go through how this works. Very first thing is the initialization, and it only happens once. So we set the value of i to zero. All right, I put it on manual focus because it's driving me crazy. Okay, so the next thing is the comparison. If this evaluates to true, we execute this section. So this actually happens after this. So we execute all this code, and then we increment i. And after every time, this is going to increment. And after every loop, we then do another comparison. So we start here, initialization, comparison, loop, update, comparison. <laughs> and we repeat that until this is evaluated as false. Once it's evaluated as false, we proceed down past the loop. Simple as that. Now, the variable i can be used to basically uh, go through arrays or to change what's being executed in this code. So for example, we can print the value of i. And since the value of i is being increased every time, we can use this to count. So if we printed this out, it would print zero, one, two, all the way up to nine. 10 times starting at zero. If you wanted to do it from one to 10, you could just print i plus one. And you can do all kinds of things. For example, if you have an array, well, you can access the index using i, and that'll allow you to iterate through a 